Easy question I have to say. Let's do it. What the hell? Like it's me. I say, oh my god. They was like, holy, holy deep. Was this going on? Because even now, I, I I get like speechless. Why is it important for a team to have a good? You do not know how to speak your mind. You're not going to give your organization much credibility for what you're really fighting for. Beauty queen doesn't mean perfection. Now I feel embarrassed to say this, but I'm going to do it because that's how I am. So. <laughs> that's good. Now go. My wave became became the Miss International wave. Right, Stephen? I have become a patent. Ito naman yung bumabasa. Oh my God. My travels, I love my travels. I would just want it to be that I gave something back that made them happy. Money or love? Love. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we are here again for uh, another round of Beauty Talks. And this time, we will dis be discussing the recent events at Miss USA and Miss Universe. Uh, the series of resignations of the current title holders is a worrying trend. And joining us today to discuss this issue is St Stefan Diaz from Miss International and our Nostradamus for predictions, the one who <laughs> nailed the hot picks for several times. We have Amir joining us, Amir Dalama. Uh -huh. We have some um, very uh, disturbing news that the Miss USA has resigned and then followed by the announcement of Miss Teen USA that she also resigned from, from her title. Now, there is no specific reason that they had provided except that they said it's for their mental health and it's it's very general reasoning so i will start guys uh miss usa and with the questions i will start with the questions so miss usa and miss 10 usa resignations for sure indicate that there must be something wrong with the organization so this organization is under mission first. so i will start with stephen as someone who is of course, a patient analyst at the same time affiliated with Miss International. What do you think are the major reasons why a title holder would resign? Hello, good morning, everyone. This is Stephen, and uh, it's nice to be back here. I think it's been a long, long time that we have actually done this thing. Um, now to answer your question, um, to be honest, first of all, I have to clarify um, to everyone that the Miss International Beauty Pageant is actually a daughter of the Miss Universe uh, Beauty Pageants. So we actually started from the Miss Universe system. And to those who do not know about the history of beauty pageants and before you start uh, making um, um, judgment and uh, opinions about oh, what am I doing here and what is my right to say something about this, like I have to be very, very clear for First and foremost, that um, whatever happens to the Miss Universe system or the Miss USA and the Miss Teen USA system, they also affect us because that's our mother organization. And we have tremendous respect towards the Miss Universe organization and we have a huge, um, uh, what's the right word that I'm looking for? We have a huge um, respect. Uh, yeah, I said respect already, but there's one word that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. But anyway, like, just to uh, make it uh, clear, um, whatever is happening with the organization, it does affect us. And of course, we are always on the loop. We cannot just simply pretend that nothing is uh, going on and uh, we cannot uh, play a blind eye on it. So whatever is happening right now with the Miss USA system, um, we kind of feel that it has something to do with the mother organization, which was the Miss Universe organization. But I also learned that the new Miss USA uh, organization and the Miss Teen USA organization are actually not directly um, affiliated with the current Miss Universe organization. So pardon me if I am mistaken, but uh, now that they have a totally new organization and uh, Things are happening in a, in, in a whim. Um, remember that Miss International changed um, leadership in 2013, and now we have um, Akemi Jimimura as our president. And things were not that um, 
easy because there will always be birthing pains. It'll be very, very difficult to actually adjust to the whole um, to the whole changes. But for the for for a certain beauty queen to actually resign and to give up her title, um, there are actually a lot of factors to be considered. Um, but uh, the bottom line there is. Um, when you actually run an organization like such as the Miss International uh, Beauty Pageant or Miss Universe or Miss USA, you have uh, a whole year, probably more than a year of selection process. Um, you choose the state titles or probably the county titles before you actually get the state title. And then when you got the state title, you go to the Miss, to the national level. So... I already assumed that by that time, the girl or the lady or the woman who is uh, who goes to the Miss USA beauty pageant is already someone who is prepared for the job. And to be able to miss that part um, on the organization that, you know, for choosing the wrong woman to represent the organization, then there is must be something wrong with the judging system or the selection system. But I don't want to say that the current Miss USA winner is actually a wrong choice. I don't, I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. It's just that something probably happened along the way. And probably there's a change in the, there's a misunderstanding, change in a contract or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But in our case, in Miss International, since we never had a history of a beauty queen or a title holder who actually resigned, mm -hmm. and uh, although there were rumors that Ikumi Yoshimatsu was actually dethroned or whatnot, but no, she was not dethroned. That was wrong. Wikipedia is wrong. Um, I think the main reason for that one is really um, maybe the expectation of the reigning queens of what they were supposed to do or before they were crowned. Maybe they were told another thing. Okay, this is what's going to happen to you. If you're going to win the title, you're going to do this and do that. And then after that, when they became the queen and they do they probably the same thing with what happened with Oksana Fedorova. If you, mm -hmm. if you how she actually gave up her title because it just didn't really, um, for her, it's not the job that she really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. so I yeah. think that's the only, that's the primary thing that I could think of. And until we hear exactly what, uh, what the two queens or former beauty queens have to say then we really everything is just mere speculation okay yeah if we look back to the history of beauty pageants we've got uh beauty queens who were dethroned simply because they're the ones who are not fulfilling their duties and their responsibilities so we've got i think uh, miss world 1973 uh, or something if i have I... 1973, yeah. Yes, um, she was dethroned because she did not fulfill her obligations. But as Stephen has pointed out, with Oksana Fedorova, it, it's another thing. It is more about her expectations. There's a lot of rumors going on in that one. They said that she's not happy how she was being treated as Miss Universe. So, uh, Amir, uh, going forward, uh, what is your opinion? What do you think uh, happened? We are all speculating speculating as of this moment because there is no specific reason that they have given the organization has not released any statements so, Amir, what do you think why do you think miss usa and miss new usa this time well um going back going back to your question rick uh, i think until such there's no official statement coming from the miss universe organization itself or the miss usa organization then definitely all everything is just speculations you know but for some reasons um i think there are so many reasons for girls to resign. As you mentioned, mental health is one. Maybe there are internal problems within the organizations. That the best, yeah. that's, I think that's a common one. There's are, there mm -hmm. are internal problems in the organizations. Uh, there could be the girl maybe somehow is looking forward for, um, rather, I mean, looking for best opportunities other than being the title holder or beauty queen. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of reasons until such maybe the Miss Universe organization will issue a statement. So yes, mental health is one. Um, internal problems or internal issues within the organization is one. Mm -hmm. But the girls is not happy anymore. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's it right. Could be yeah. somehow, there's, there's a lot of reasons. So, but for me, I think um, the best thing to do for the organization to make this thing or this issue close is for them to issue an official statement. Correct. Just to clarify things. Okay, guys, we move forward because this resignations resonates in so many ways. And I think it's beginning to become a pattern, starting with the resignation of the Miss Universe uh, President Paula Sugar. Well, she, she's a president, right? So it 
it's for me it started there and then you have Lou Shera also uh, saying she's not going to be involved with Miss Universe anymore. And all of these happened during the transition of Miss Universe from one owner to another. So I think we will just mention the, the big elephant in the room. Do you think that the new owner, Kun An, is, is a good thing? Uh, let's start with Stephen. Well, I don't think I'm the right person to answer this question <laughs> because um, I also work for for a for Miss International, which is um, I don't want to say that we are a rival pageant because we are probably we're just like yeah. mother daughter pageant, yeah. Miss Universe and Miss International. So when the the when Kun An actually um, when she took over the the Miss Universe, uh, the whole Miss Universe system, um, it was actually uh, embraced with open arms by a lot of people because, you know, it's uh, for the very first time we have a woman owner of uh, the Miss Universe mm -hmm. pageant and then it became more inclusive. And, uh, and from there, things have been happening. And then I don't even want to specify what were those things because I'm pretty sure if you are a pageant fan, you're you, aware you of them. Know, yeah. And uh, but so far she has been running the organization for two years, and like I said a while ago in the previous to the previous question, whenever there is a change, there will always be birthing pains. Yeah, and it will be very very difficult to actually change everything. Like for example, Miss International, when the transition happened in two thousand thirteen, a lot of things happened. As a matter of fact, Miss International wouldn't have happened in two thousand thirteen. Mm -hmm. Um. Not for the sacrifices of Akemi Shimomura, our president, mm. because she really, just really wanted to do it. Remember, it was held on December. It was almost didn't happen actually, but mm -hmm. she just wanted to because she felt bad uh, with the girls who were already selected to compete in 2013, and uh, that's the reason why she just made made things happen out of her own pocket money. And then 2013 happened, and then in 2014 it slowly improved, 15, 16, and eventually we were able to reach this uh, stage. Yeah, uh, I oh. understand. Yeah, I understand that a lot of people doesn't want to to answer the question whether Kunan is is good for Miss Universe or not, uh, and for a lot of reasons. It's just too but, early to say that. Yeah, you know, yeah. probably she's also struggling with a lot of yeah. things that are happening. Yeah. And uh, if we only try to focus on the negative side of it, then yeah. we will be thinking, oh, she's really bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, things are happening uh, the way yeah. and but also we have to think about the positive things that, uh, that she has done yeah that she has done so yeah. it you can't just simply weigh one and then yeah. ignore the other yeah i think it also helps if we focus instead of the person more on the policies that that person is implementing so uh, amir in your opinion do you think that the policies of kun an is actually good for mission universe well, when you say policies, there are a lot in of changes in her policies yeah, yeah, now. Right, yeah. So I think sometimes policies will take some time to be, you know, implemented. Correct. Sometimes it's a test of water. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, it's testing water. Yes. So sometimes um, changing some policies, internal or changes in the policies will some affect some, you know, um, individuals perhaps. Or should I say, uh, you know, you you have to really to make some uh, changes if you need to, but sometimes it affects a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So it's it's too unfair also for Conan to be, you know, um, said that he's not doing her job well because it's just been so short of time on, mm -hmm. only for her right. to prove herself. Um, but I think she, she's doing her job. She's doing her thing. But, you know, there's a lot of critics, you know. Whenever you, it happens in all pageants, when you do some changes, there's a lot of critics. And, you yeah. know, by that, I think she has to, whatever whatever critics she receives, whatever criticism she receives, I think she has to, she has to do more or should I say, she has her own reason uh, mm -hmm. of doing her own thing. So right. I think, um, yeah, changing policies inside, it is a test of water. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of resistance also if you change things, you know. Yes, yes. And because also a lot of people will be affected. Mm -hmm. We have to also consider the fact that Miss Universe is really a business system. It's an yeah. entirely different business system. With, compared with Miss International, we're in our main business. It's different. And Miss International mm -hmm. is just an event that we are doing. Yeah. So there's a huge difference there. And at the same time, look at our owner, Akemi Shimomura. Like when she took over in 2013, she wasn't present in any social media 
Um, she didn't. She doesn't even have a social media account. <laughs> so Sorry. she's just doing her job of financing the pageant and helping dreams of these young women come women. true. And it, she's just more focused on that one. So I think there's a huge difference on that one. So that's I think that's the reason why we were able to navigate this um, smoothly. But it was not easy. I have to tell you, it wasn't easy at all. Guys, Kunan oh, yeah. was it's caught it's on not a, a one-day yeah. process break. You know, when you yeah. change policies, it's not a one-day process. <laughs> Correct, yeah. yeah. Especially coming from Guys, the CPA. He yeah. knows that very well. <laughs> Kunan was caught on a video saying that promoting inclusivity at Miss Universe was just a communication strategy. So this is a bit shocking, guys. She later claimed that she was misquoted and that, you know, the context in the video was not properly uh, displayed or properly communicated to the public. Do you think that it was just indeed a communication strategy that uh, married women, transgender, and changing the, the you know, there were no age limit? Uh, do you think that this married women, transgender, and uh, women above 30 doesn't really have a chance in winning the Miss Universe crown? Stephen, we'll start with you. Well, to be very honest, I think they have even more chance now to win because the, this could be used as something to prove that <laughs> to prove them wrong, right? Yeah. So yes. if you say that they are, don't have a chance this year, I think their chances are even better now because, yeah. uh, like, who knows? This year we might have a first ever married woman winner or a first yeah. unwed mother winner or yeah. a first gen transgender winner. You know. Yeah. It is actually the perfect timing to to prove that yeah, to prove that, that the critics are wrong. Yeah. They're wrong. But also, I I just want to to see how the pageant world is actually going on right now because even though all these things were happening, whether you are against it for it or you, uh -huh. you are somewhere in the middle, it, you can see happened. people are talking about it. And then when yeah. people are talking about it, then there is really something you know to look forward to. Yeah. So people are still following the pageant. There are still mm -hmm. girls or unmarried who are married who are single mother who are still joining the national system yeah. believing that it wasn't true so yeah. we, have, we have all these people who just ignored what they have actually heard and simply just hope for the best because you know mm. that's what that's what we always uh, we human beings we always expect the worst but still hoping for the best and even though you've heard something like that, something something that will be against you, or you know, it's just like it's just like being in a relationship. You know, you already saw the red, the red the red flags, but you still kept on pursuing. You know, <laughs> it's human nature. Yeah, uh, Amir, what do you think? Does does uh, married well, women do do they really have a chance in winning, or this is all just well, for show? <laughs> well, if this is if the video was really true, then that I feel bad for this, you know, married yeah. women, transgender women. Yeah. Um, and also this could be a communication strategy, right? But somehow it could also be a part of you know tarnishing the image of Konan. Mm -hmm. And if you ask me if there's a chance, well, as Stephen said, it could be used now because. That is to prove the critics that the, what they're saying is really wrong because it's mm -hmm. not the direction of the Miss Universe right now. So somehow it could be a big chance for those transgender and married women to win the title for Miss Universe, you know. Um, I can see that there's a lot of, you know, it could be politics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it could be somehow tarnishing the image of Conan. So I just hope that they really stick into their uh, core values Whatever they, they try to vision for the Miss Universe, I think they should have focus in that sense. Yeah. Guys, I would like to know, what was your first reaction when it was announced that transgender, married women, unwed mothers, and women older than 28 or 30 can now participate at Miss Universe? Personally, I think that this is quite a shock, and I'm really disappointed because I'm more of a a conservative guy when it comes to these things. Uh, for me, it's not discriminatory because uh, transgender have their own patients, married women or unwed mothers have their own patients. And it's it will not become a beauty contest unless we have specific criteria. But at the same time, I understand that the world is changing. We are getting modern and inclusivity and that big tent thing 
is is something that we should embrace now. So I understand why there is this kind of uh, policy changes at Miss Universe and for that matter to to other pages. But uh, I would like to gauge exactly what was your opinion or feelings when you first heard about these changes at Miss Universe, Stephen. Personally, personally, well, um, for me personally, I would, and it is the same answer that I have whenever I am being asked that same question. Um, I said like, it's their business, it's their organization, it's their thing. You know? They can like, do what they so, want, yeah. Yeah, they can do whatever they want. Like it's same with us, it means international, it's our pageant. So we have our own rules, we have our own thing. And then this is how we want it because you know, uh, this is this is the money of our CEO. This is yeah. the money of our sponsor. This is the money that is that we are using. So we are, so we have to um, abide with whatever is already decided. However, this is not something new, Rick. I just want to clarify. I just want to tell to the viewers right now that even at Miss International, we have that same pressure because the G7 countries or the G8 countries are like probably the advanced countries, the rich countries, to make it a more layman's term, is actually putting that pressure even in Japan, you know, there is that pressure that we have to change everything, that we have to start accepting married women, that mm -hmm. we have to erase the the age limit mm -hmm. or miss international. But mm -hmm. all of those were rejected by mm -hmm. our board because it it's not because because simply because Miss International is not a business. Yeah. If we are a registered business, then probably we would bow, we would have bowed down to that demand. Sure, yeah. However, we are no, we are just an event. And we are just giving opportunities to young women. And that is the actual the core value of Miss International, giving opportunities for young women. So if you are not young anymore, then you have a different priorities in life. Mm -hmm. You right. cannot compete with the, these young women in the same level, and especially that there's judging going on. Mm -hmm. So this is actually an opportunity to be given to the young women. So why would you take away this opportunity from them? You know, if you are older, then you have better opportunities. You have already been there, done that, and you have more wisdom, and uh, you have different priorities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But young people, young women, for example, as a matter of, um, in our case, for example, they have different priorities as well. They are just starting to navigate what they really want to do with their lives, what kind of career they want to pursue. They are young. That's mm -hmm. the reason why this opportunity is for them, and that is what Miss International is about. Mm -hmm. I would just like to expound what you said there, Steph. A lot of answers back in the 90s said that, or early 2000s, that beauty pages are actually like a springboard for young women to forge ahead, to quote Miss Universe 2000, to forge ahead and pursue other career paths, be it in medicine, in the military. So, yeah, I think there's like... Uh, there's a, a good point that you have raised that um uh you what you said about this all about hope we're running out of time yes but, I'm but, yeah but yeah. well it is um young young women have limited you know like the, the limited la span you know not lifespan yeah. sorry like <laughs> limited time to That's... actually figure things out I, I know things could change you know but at the same time if you're young women and then you're just you're you're more uh you're uh, you you your 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 horizon is limit, limitless yeah, yes yeah, so to speak. Yeah. When, so remember for example me as a 45 44 year old guy right now my 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 span of uh, things were a lot different when I was in my 20s. Correct, yeah. Because I thought the sky was the limit and the horizon was my limit and then yeah. I could do this, I could do that. I was more aggressive, I was more of a risk taker, but yeah. that's not the same anymore if you have reached a certain age. <laughs> yes. so yeah. Yeah. Be very fun. honest with that one. And see, especially with women, more, most especially with women because physiologically speaking, a lot of things are changing with a woman's body yeah. by the time they reach a certain age. As as and much as yeah, as much as the society wants to romanticize things like uh, age is not a barrier or there's no limit when it comes to age, uh, biology says otherwise. So let's let's have let's have that kind of perspective that 
there's a reality when it comes to all of this. Like when you're aging, things are different, like as Stephen said. Uh, so Amir, what was your first reaction when all of these policies was changed? Well, well honestly, honestly, Rick, my first reaction was I was shocked. Just like you, I was shocked because I'm not used to it, honestly. And I, I agree with you because um, there are pageants for transgenders, for married women. However, I feel I feel good for those who are older women. But at least the Miss Universe, should I say, this is just my opinion, that they would have to set the parameters on what age limit should be imposed. Yeah. Because it's just yeah, an open... Yeah, it's just not an open. Mm. So I was so shocked then because you know how prestige is Miss Universe. But yeah, then again, it's, it's the rule. It's their, it's their pageant. It's the rule. Mm, mm. <laughs> but I was yeah. really shocked. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, I would like us to um, go on and discuss with both what uh, both of you. You said that it's their pageant. It's it's their uh, thing. It's their policies. So it's up to them if they want to change. But don't you think that they have that social responsibility, even that Miss Universe or Miss International? is an institution by itself. So don't you think that they have that responsibility that to be more aware of what the fans uh, are are saying or what are the fans are feeling about it? Like, you know, this is a institution. We have to be prestigious. We have to be exclusive instead of being inclusive. What do you think, Stan? Okay, um, going first with the fans. Um, first of all, you know, many of the fans, we have never met them in person and we don't even know who they are, whether they are true or whether they are trolls or whether they are just like a multiple accounts of one person or whatnot. So we mm. let, that's uh, difficult to gauge, yeah. So um, that's why Miss International, we don't actually live for the fans. We do not, mm -hmm. uh, do not in, we try as much as possible not to put, like, you know, there's a lot of pressure on Miss International. If we just abide, if we just listen to the fans all the time, then probably we have already crowned an African winner. Probably we have already crowned an Indian winner because that's the demand that they have. They always, like, you know, no, no African winner, no black African winner, no black winner, although we have black winner, no Indian winner, um, no women yeah, from no South way. Asia has won your pageant. No, these are the pressures that we have. Then if we actually, like, just gave in to the, to the demands of the fans, then probably, you know, that's what would have probably would have happened. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we always have to be very fair to all the girls who are actually yeah. joining. That we cannot just simply like, you know, um, be politically correct, but at the uh -huh. same time, ignore the hard work of some girls who actually came to our pageant Deserve. and believe the game. Deserving women. So yeah. in our pageant, whoever is the best wins. That's it. It's just how it mm -hmm. is. And the most important part in our pageant, our main social responsibility is that all the girls or all the women, young women who come to our pageant will come back home to their respective country happy and not traumatized by the experience. That's the reason why we do not, we do not really dwell too much on social media power because yeah. if it's too much, you know, we don't want these girls to become social media sensations. We don't yeah. want them to have a career that is totally dependent on social media. So if you ask us why the Miss International winner does not stay in Japan and why do, don't we house them in Japan, this is because whoever wins Miss International, she has a career or studies oh, that she has to continue back home. She has to continue that. We don't want her to stop just because she is Miss International. She continues with her job. She continues with her studies. And whatever changes happens in between, that's up to her. It's her responsibility. She's an adult. And that's the reason why we require a national director to, to, to compete in her pageant. We do not accept individual entry. A national director is necessary because he or she, the national director, is the one who is going to manage the girl in case she wins. Stephen, uh, just... Uh, we move on to the next question, and I think that what you said is interesting. Uh, just to close up the last question, uh, this closing question. Uh, Stephen, will there be a time where Miss International will allow transgender married women and women over 30 be allowed to compete no. with Miss International? I cannot really speak what's going to happen in the next five years or 10 but years. Do you, do you foresee, do you foresee it, will be, it will happen in the future or in the near future? 
May maybe I don't, I don't know. Maybe it will happen, or maybe okay. not. Uh, but uh, as of now, we are we just want to stick with our with our core okay. with with okay. Is the real purpose of Miss International, and the purpose is to give opportunities to young yeah. women. Uh, okay, uh, just a quick one, Amir, because we're running out of time. Uh, do you <laughs> think the big five pageants? Yeah, I'm, we are about three minutes uh, to our time. Uh, Amir, do you think that the other big five patients would follow what the missionaries is doing? I mean, Miss Supernational has already raised the age limit. Well, for me, in my own opinion, I don't think so because each pageant should maintain its own brand and it should be up to each of them whether they would be, you know, um, go with the inclusivity thing or not. No, So I didn't think so. So it, it depends on to the because they have to maintain it to their own brand, right? You know, they have their own branding, so they have to stick to that. Well, yeah. it, it's up to them if they have to go to to you to use the word inclusivity or not to change yeah. the age limit or not. But the word inclusivity for me should need to be still be clarified what because is, what it does really opens mean, yeah. so many conjectures and sources of many controversies. <laughs> controversies. So that's okay. one thing that should be okay. clarified first. L last one and quickly, uh, because we are indeed running out of time. I've been saying that a lot. Stephen, what do you think is going to happen to Miss USA and Miss Universe in the near future with all of these resignations? Just well, I hope that they will be able to go through with that one, you know, because honestly, they are still the standard that we have. You know, it's yeah. the most popular brand, uh, pageant Correct. brand there is. So whatever happens to them, it does affect uh, the other brands. The especially entire industry, yeah. Industry. yeah. Industry. So just be very careful. We are just hoping that, you know, that uh, all this will be settled because our national directors, they're not just sending delegates to Miss International. They're also so sending delegates to Miss USA. Yeah. So whatever happens, I have to, sorry, I'm sorry, to Miss, Miss Universe. Universe. So whatever happens to Miss Universe, it does affect the national organization as well. So I really hope that things will, will be, there will be able to, yeah. yeah, to sort this out and, yeah. um, you know, just like any other scandal, you know, what doesn't kill you, what is <laughs> Yeah, makes you stronger. <laughs> you Amir, stronger. <laughs> uh, quickly, uh, just a sentence or two about what do you think going to happen with the Miss USA and Miss Universe? We have a minute left. Well, I think, yeah, I think Miss Universe and Miss USA would do well constant transparency. Without this, the pageant community will be left with no choice but to speculate or whenever the new controversy erupts, you know, you have to to be transparent all the times. Yeah. So for me, it yeah. seems that releasing official statement would be the best thing to do because there's no such thing as bad news will eventually die or be forgotten at all the time. Oh, yeah. I yeah. think the organization should always update their followers. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. I'm really sorry we're running out of time. Tomorrow, can we do find uh, like a hot fix for Miss Universe Philippines? I'll let you know. Let me know, Rick, anytime. Okay. <laughs> Stephen, thank you so much. Always interesting to talk with thank you. Thank you, everyone.